Hello everyone, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name is Lauren and I'm a craft producer here at Makers Gonna Learn. In today's video, we are going to be teaching you all about how to etch on class, but not only that, I'm going to show you how to add color to your etched glass so that you have a really beautiful effect. If you are new to our channel, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified every time we come to you with a great craft. Now we're just going to hop overhead and I'm going to show you all the materials that you're going to need to get started with this amazing craft. Now that we're overhead, you can see that the supplies for this craft are pretty minimal and maybe things that you just have laying around. The main component for this is going to be your armor etch. You're going to have to have armor etch or some type of etching cream to etch on your glass. Now, there are other types of etching cream. We just really, really like armor etch. This is our favorite, so this is the one that we recommend using. Obviously, you're gonna need your blank. We actually got this from the Dollar Tree. You can find some really great blanks for glass etching at the Dollar Tree. Um, the other one we had came from Hobby Lobby before we found this one at Dollar Tree. So I would definitely check out your local Dollar Tree first um, to, if you haven't etched on glass, to try your etching on glass first before you buy something more expensive. For the color that we're gonna be adding, we're gonna be using Rub and Buff. Now, one thing I wanna say is we tried multiple different ways to add color to your glass. And hands down, Rub and Buff was our favorite. We tried different types of, different brands of the same like wax metallic finish that did not really go as smooth, go on as smooth as the Rub and Buff. So I highly suggest using Rub and Buff to add color. Now you don't have to use gold. They have Rub and Buff in multiple colors. We're just using gold for this specific craft. Next, you are going to need gloves. This is to keep yourself safe. Obviously, Armor Etch is a chemical, so you will need to wear protective gloves. We have a paintbrush to put the etching cream on with. And for our stencil, we're just using scrap vinyl. This is not something that you have to have special um, stencil vinyl for. Just use scrap pieces of your permanent vinyl that you have laying around so that you are not wasting anything. And finally, you are going to need a measuring tape. Now this is going to come in very handy when it comes to measuring the surface that you are going to be working on. So this is very important that you have some type of measuring tape or tool to measure with. Now that we've gone over all of our materials, we're gonna hop over into the design space and I'm going to show you how you can take a file from Makers Gonna Learn, upload it into Cricut Design Space and cut it as a stencil for this project. Now that we're here, before we jump into Design Space, we're actually gonna start on our website. If you are new to Makers Gonna Learn or to our channel, what we are is we are a membership-based crafting community where we bring you inspiration, education, and motivation to get that Cricut and use it to its full potential. So we're gonna start in our cut file section. Now, we actually release thousands of cut files every month new, so we have a very extensive library for you to check out. We're actually gonna be making a little Christmas themed um, glass etching project. So I know what file I'm going to use. So I'm just gonna type that in. If you don't know, you can really go through and view all of our files. Um, we have them separated out in different sections. But all I'm going to do, I'm going to type in, oh come let us, and that should bring up the file that we're going to be using today. Now that I've found the file that I'm going to use, I'm going to click on it. Now you don't have to open it up, but if you want to, to really see all of the details, you can. So how to download this file? We're going to go here to the cloud icon that has the arrow pointing down. We're going to click that. It's going to download as a zip file. We are going to open it up. Now we're going to go over to Cricut Design Space. We are going to upload, and then we're going to click upload image. From here, you can drag and drop if you would like to. If not, you can go to browse, and then I'm just gonna go to downloads, and it will pop up with the 
most recent downloads you have, and I want this as an SVG. Now, the difference between an SVG and a PNG, a PNG is the picture graphic, so it's gonna be more like your print and cut image. An SVG is a vector graphic, so we want to open that up because that's going to be your cut graphic. We are going to click Upload, and then from there, I'm going to add this to my canvas. Now, we're not really gonna be doing a lot of slicing, welding, really manipulating this file. I like it as it is. So now what I want to do, we're going to go overhead and I want to take my blank or whatever area that I'm working on and I want to measure to see how wide and how tall we can have this file. So we're looking at closer to about three and a quarter, maybe even three inches by about four is how tall this is so we're going to come back over here to design space and i really want to make sure this width stays correct so we are going to make sure that our image is locked some images upload automatically locked some of them upload and they are unlocked so if you leave it unlocked and you type in your width then it's going to really mess up it's going to really mess up this file so make sure that that stays locked and then i'm going to do three inches on the width and then enter and it will automatically size this to where we need it now from there if you look at your layers panel over here you can see we'll zoom in you can see that this SVG is two different colors. So we have a little green color and we have this tan color. If you were to go to make it right now, because these are two separate colors, they, this is recognizing it as two separate layers. So it's going to cut on two different mats. What you need to do is select both of these layers and go ahead and weld them together. That way it cuts it all as one piece. So I'm going to click weld and as you can see it all changes to the same color and that's when you know that it will all cut on the same mat. Once we have that done we're going to go over here to make it, continue, we are going to select the device that we will be using today and then we're just going to cut this on premium vinyl removable mat. From there we're going to load our mat into our Cricut. Once that's finished, we're going to unload our mat and then we are going to start the weeding process. Now, when weeding, when you are doing a stencil, you are going to want to weed the part that we normally keep with vinyl. So you're going to weed the letters out. And you may want to be careful when weeding because there are some smaller pieces in this design that we do not want to miss. Now that we have all that weeded, I'm just going to cut out this area here. And then I'm going to take some transfer tape and I'm going to place it on top of our vinyl. And I'm just going to burnish it down. Yes, I'm burnishing it down with a bone folder, but hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm going to rub my glass down with alcohol so that I make sure that this adhesive sticks very well so that we get a good crisp line with our stencil. And now we're going to add our design to our glass. 
you do want to make sure you get all of the bubbles out and make sure those edges are down very, very well. And then we're going to take our transfer tape off. Now what you may want to do is you may want to come back in these smaller pieces, kind of move them around because they can move around and just make sure you press them down really firm onto your glass so that you have a good nice seal on that. And then we are going to start the etching process. So first thing you need to do before you start etching is you need to put your gloves on because safe crafting is the best crafting. Now we're going to take our armor etch and our paintbrush and what we're going to do is we're going to paint the armor etch onto our stencil. Now if you are not comfortable, if you're afraid that your armor etch is going to get off of your stencil, you can tape all of this off around it. Um, that way you know for sure the armor etch is not going to get on it. That's going to be a personal preference, whatever you feel more comfortable in doing. I personally think that taking your brush and moving this armor etch around and continuing to paint it kind of all over really helps get down in those grooves that you might miss. I like to have a pretty thick coating so I'm actually going to come back in here and add just a little more over top. I know that this is covered but I also like to just make sure it's covered very very well. I would probably move it around with my paintbrush for at least one or two minutes just making sure it gets in there in the grooves and moving it around even if you have to kind of push it in there that works as well too. And now we are going to start our timer. Now the bottle directions say to leave it for one to three minutes but I think five minutes works best so now I'm going to start my timer for five minutes and we will be right back. Now that our timer has gone off what we're going to do is we're going to take our paintbrush and we're just going to take this excess armor edge and we're actually going to put it back in the bottle because you can reuse this multiple times so we're just going to very easily take this and kind of just put it back in this bottle and now I'm going to take this to the sink and I'm going to wash the rest off now make sure you do leave your gloves on for this so that you don't get any of this on your hands. So leave your gloves on, take it to the sink, and we're going to wash this off and we will be right back. Now one little trick that I like to do before I actually take my stencil off to make sure that all of the pieces that I want etched are etched is I like to take my project and I like to hold it up to the light and then you can see what places etched very well and what places did not. Now you do have to make sure that it's very dry because otherwise it's going to look like it is not, it has not been etched. So by holding this up to the light, I feel like it looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and take this stencil off. Now, as you can see, this is great as is. However, if you want to add a little color, I've saved one of my gloves and I'm going to show you how to do that with Rub and Buff. Now, before we get started with the Rub and, bu rub and Buff, there's one thing that I do want to say. I only suggest doing this on something that you plan on not washing. And here is why. I tested this on, tested adding color, I tested um, screen print ink, I tested um, the rub and buff, I tested two or three different types of this, um, the paint and everything, but when it was on something that I planned on using and washing on the outside of, let's say, like a wine glass or something, 
Every time I went to wash it, they would all come off. So I would only suggest using this on a decorative piece. So please keep that in mind. We are just using this on a decorative piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rub and buff and I'm going to put a little bit of it on my finger and I'm going to have a paper towel ready and you're just going to come in here and you're going to work this in these edges. Now this dries pretty fast so I would come in here and wipe this fairly quick and then you're just going to keep working this around until you have all of the etched area covered with rub and buff. And then we're actually going to come in and do one other layer as well. We're going to start down here in the corner where we missed it a little bit the first time. I will also say this. I did try doing this with the stencil still on as well, thinking, oh, that would be perfect. I won't have to wipe any of it away. Um, the rub and buff actually just ended up building up around the, um, the stencil, and it just looked really gunky. So this was the best method that I found. And there you have it. You have a beautiful custom shelf sitting piece that's going to be beautiful for the holiday season. Now I'm just going to add in some little details inside. And there you go. I really hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have learned all that you need to know about etching on glass and adding color to your etching design. Once again, if you are new to our channel, make sure you like this video, hit that bell notification, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any crafts that we bring you. If you are wanting to learn more or join our community, make sure you check us out at makersgonnalearn.com where we always bring you the inspiration, education, and motivation to get crafting with your Cricut. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.